As New Orleans prepares for Mardi Gras, police come across a crime scene that doesn't make sense. This particular case would be bizarre in any neighborhood. A young mother is dead under mystifying circumstances. She was running towards the living room. But can Dr. Henry Lee put the pieces together and solve a murder that has baffled police for years? Two defendants give almost identical story, but the crime scene says a different scene. This murder is stay with me even now. A beautiful woman killed, killed by a baseball bat. A difficult case, it did not make sense. I remember it was Mardi Gras in New Orleans. That should be a happy time. at the picture today it reminds me why the sheriff convinced me to take a look of this case I can't stop thinking a beautiful family When sheriff's deputies answered a call from a distraught husband in suburban New Orleans, they found the man's wife, Janet Myers, dead on her living room floor. As you see, this is just a, a horrific scene. Um, this had to be an, an unbelievably nightmarish event. The dead woman's husband, Carrie, was injured. An infant daughter, Sarah, was unharmed, but a two-year-old son, Ryan, was found unconscious. My husband answered the phone, and they said that um, someone had broken into Carrie's house, and that Janet was dead, and Ryan was injured. Carrie told police Janet had been killed by his best friend, Bill Fontenelle. Police found Fontenelle at a hospital being treated for stab wounds. Kerry himself was taken to another hospital with a broken arm and cuts on his head. I decided I had to go to the hospital to hear Kerry tell me that, uh, you know, Billy had killed Janet and beat him with a bat, broken his arm, and Kerry had, he had a broken arm and he had stab wounds and, you know, I believed what Kerry was saying. Kerry Myers had his version of what happened, but the prime suspect, Bill Fontenelle, told investigators a different story. The first thing that he said to the police when he went to the emergency room at West Jefferson Hospital, they had a security detail there. And he told the sheriff, my friend killed his wife and he's gonna try to blame it on me. A woman was dead and police were getting two different versions of how it happened. But both accounts agreed on one astonishing detail. The story is that, the, that these two best of friends fought for five or six hours. Uh, fought so much that they, they just got fatigued and actually took a rest, sat together drinking water and watched Dorsky and Hutch. On t and then they both said the same thing. This is what we watched, this is what we did. Here's where we sat. And, uh, uh, and all the while, uh, uh, the wife was lying dead in a room right next to them, and the story comes up, which is really bizarre, is that neither one of them knew she was even there, that she was dead. Janet Myers and her husband, Carrie. Carrie's best friend, Bill Fontenelle. They formed an interesting triangle. 
When investigators dug into their backgrounds, they learned that all three had grown up in Jefferson Parish, in communities heavily influenced by religious values. The boys, Carrie and Bill, had gone to Archbishop Shaw Catholic High School and never strayed far from home. After college, Carrie went to work selling industrial hydraulic and pneumatic systems. Some of the parts were used to automate Mardi Gras floats, and that's what Carrie was working on the day of the murder. Bill Fontenelle didn't have a steady job, and perhaps not as many friends, but he could always count on Carrie. They had a very close relationship and got along very well. And I think even to the, the closing days before the, uh, before the incident, they spent quite a bit of time together at Carrie's house. The police still had questions about what happened in the house the day of the murder, but the physical evidence, together with Carrie's accusations, were enough for the sheriff to arrest Bill Fontenelle. This is one of those open and shut murder cases. We have, we have the, uh, the husband of the deceased saying, I was in the house and this guy did it. And we made the arrest. Bill Fontenelle went on trial for murder. The state's star witness against him was Carrie Myers but the mysterious and deadly game they began in the Myers home was still in the early innings. It's kind of interesting, all my career, investigating almost six to 7,000 major cases. This is the first one. Two defendants give almost identical story. But the crime scene says a different scene. What does the crime scene evidence reveal? And will it contain enough detail to implicate a young mother's killer? In New Orleans in Mardi Gras season, across the river in Jefferson Parish, in a middle-class suburban neighborhood, sheriff's detectives were investigating the murder of Janet Myers. Two men were in the house when she died, her husband Carrie and his best friend Bill. Both men had knife wounds. Carrie also had a broken arm from being hit, according to Carrie, with the same baseball bat that Bill Fontenelle used to kill Janet. Police arrested Fontenelle for murder. There was probably no reason to disbelieve um, Myers. Carrie is kind of a family type person, home type person. Carrie's family still couldn't make sense of the events surrounding Janet's death. They only knew that Bill Fontenelle was in jail awaiting trial and that he continued to insist Carrie had set him up. The thrust of his comment was, there's a murder. I didn't do it, but the husband is going to say, I did it. I had never seen Billy do anything violent, never seen Billy show anger. Billy was the one that was always calm out of the ball games. Um, Billy was the one that kneeled and crossed himself uh, before taking the bat. So. Yeah, to hear that, well, Billy went over there and for no reason uh, bashed Janet's head in with a baseball bat and killed her, uh, tried to kill Ryan, tried to kill Carrie, uh, made no sense. But when investigators dug deeper, they discovered that Bill Fontenelle had shown fits of anger during a recent divorce. Uh, a fit of rage, he, he had tore some of the, um, not appliances, but uh, like the toilet uh, sink away from the uh, away from his residence and um, just showing, um, uh, beating uh, the porcelain with hammers and all. He, he did have a temper. Bill Fontenelle had just lost a custody battle with his ex-wife. Was he angry when he went to Carrie's house that day? Both men agreed they'd fought for hours with occasional rest breaks, and both claimed they never noticed Janet's body lying in the next room. Two friends sat in a house um, both damaged, hurt, bloody, beaten, and claiming that the other one attacked them. But then they sat there for the next, I think, eight hours and just talked. Each one saying, we watched television. That didn't make any sense, that you would sit there for several hours and not ask to check on the other people in the home, Janet, Ryan, and infant Sarah. Prosecutors were still puzzled as the trial approached. The two men had no traces of alcohol or drugs that might explain their strange behavior. And why did Fontenelle go to the Myers home in the first place? Was it to see Carrie, or was he there to see Janet? 
According to Fontenelle, he had engaged in a sexual encounter with Janet Myers uh, the previous day. Allegedly, he was feeling um, remorse over that. So he was going back over to the house to tell her that he was going to break it off and also to retrieve his baseball bat, which was the murder weapon. At Bill Fontenelle's trial, the jury found the evidence confusing at best. Was the accused man a killer or a scapegoat? The jury listened to the facts and, and uh, uh, we were not able to convince them with the physical evidence and uh, they, they could not reach a decision. It was a hung jury. The jury deadlocked six to six with no agreement on who did what to whom. Janet Meyer's killer remained at large and the two former best friends went on with their lives almost as if nothing had happened. Carrie had uh, moved back in with his parents, Billy had moved back in with his, and they were both in the same neighborhood where they had grown up. But Carrie never really said anything negative about Billy other than sticking to his story that for no reason Billy attacked him when he walked in his own home and um, killed his wife, but I never saw anger. It was never like we had to hold Carrie back from going over there and beating the living, you know, what, out of Billy. There was, none of that went on. As Mardi Gras seasons came and went, prosecutors were troubled that Janet Meyer's murder remained unsolved. We had done about as much as we could do uh, from a law enforcement perspective to try to put the case together. And we needed somebody to come in and bring some rhyme and reason to what took place on that scene. And that's how Dr. Lee ultimately got involved. Henry Lee, based in Connecticut, found himself on a plane again, flying to a crime scene. This time, to New Orleans West Bank, across the Mississippi River, and a couple of miles closer to Cajun country. The district attorney there, Paul Connick, knew Dr. Lee was busy with other cases, but he also remembered the noted criminalist never turned down Cajun uh, cooking. But I did to as added incentive for you to take the case if you remember when <laughs> right. I ordered 200 pounds of boiled crawfish Bro and, yeah. and sent them to you for you and your staff. Right, we had a crawfish party. Right. Yeah. I remember that. Next morning, two-thirds of my staff <laughs> book sick. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm the only one survived. So I must have a tough stomach or something. Uh, of course, we ate the crawfish. We better do the case, too. <laughs> Dr. Lee started studying the crime scene photos. Someone was getting away with murder. Would Dr. Lee be able to reconstruct what happened that night and name Janet Myers' killer? When the jury couldn't reach a verdict in the trial of Bill Fontenelle for the murder of Janet Myers, prosecutors didn't give up. They turned for help to criminalist Henry Lee. Here are approximately 250 individual blood drops. Those are so- Could be dropped from above? From above, exactly. In taking the case, Dr. Lee was renewing an old acquaintance, the top cop in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana for 24 years, a man of Chinese ancestry with a familiar last name, Sheriff Harry Lee. The sheriff and Dr. Lee call each other cousin. The house looks like the Sam. Yeah, the house is the same, but this, uh, we just have a good working relationship, and, I, and I'm, I'm his greatest admirer. He, he, he's so smart. So what, uh, where? Dr. Lee's first order of business is to visit the crime scene. Uh, this is the location. Inside, think, uh, the two men confronted the challenge of deciphering a confusing trail of blood. Feet towards that direction. A large amount of blood that was on the carpet. Would they ever understand what had happened here? We see tremendous amount of blood spatter. Sheriff Department investigator did a wonderful job. 
They took almost hundreds of uh, good photographs, document every part of the house. That's why I make this case possible to do a partial reconstruction. Dr. Lee found trails of minute blood spatter on the walls, floor, and furniture winding from room to room. This was the first step in reconstructing the crime scene. I was able to see hair and blood spatter on the bottom of the planner. Impact force create a blood and hair project onto this portion of the planner. The murder weapon seemed obvious. The blood-stained baseball bat found against the sofa in the family room. Yet Janet's body was found in the living room. Dr. Lee also saw other puzzling trace evidence in the kitchen, foyer, and hallway. This crime scene pretty complicated, involving five different areas. The physical evidence at the house may have been complex, but just as baffling were the different accounts given by the injured husband, Carrie Myers, and his friend, Bill Fontanelle, where each man accused the other of attacking first. In his tape-recorded statement, Fontanelle said Myers stabbed him with a butcher knife. He stood up. I said, Carrie, why are you doing this to me? He just said, I'm doing what I've got to do. He came at me again with a knife, and I started swinging the baseball bat. Uh, after studying the interviews of both Myers and Fontanelle, Dr. Lee was able to reconstruct each man's version of the events on the night Janet was murdered. He was assisted by the head of the Connecticut Police Crime Lab, Tim Palmbach. Dr. Lee placed lab technician Sean Dolan in the exact position where deputies found the victim's body. According to Terry Meyer's statement to the detectives, that afternoon, about 3, 3.30, he got home, opened the door, walked into this hallway. He saw a baseball bat at the end. He quickly used his left hand, tried to block it. He felt the pain. Myers said he never saw his wife's body lying in plain sight in the living room. Attack the attack. In the foyer area, then into family room. Two of them struggle on the ground and fighting and tear. They got so exhausted and tired, uh, they took a break, watching television, have a glass of uh, water. They watch at seven o'clock, a police show. After that, they resume the fighting again. They fight on the ground and beating each other and tear almost midnight. They don't want to miss Johnny Carson show. After the show finished, Meyer asked Fontenelle, where's my wife? Where's Janet? How's my kid? Fontenelle say, they're fine. They're okay. Meyer took a kitchen knife and he started stabbing him on the chest several times them in the back, chasing him away from the house. He ran away. Now he walked back to the kitchen, get the telephone, make a 911 phone call. And uh, he saw his wife's body lying in a pool of blood. He report to the police. His wife been beat up and killed. He also gave a suspect's name, Bill Fontenelle. That's Carrie Meyer's version. Deputies heard a similar scenario from Bill Fontenelle, except that it begins not with Carrie showing up, but with Bill himself arriving. Fontenelle enters the Meyer's residence and he states that as soon as he gets into the main foyer area, out of nowhere, he's attacked. And he's attacked 
and he received some knife wounds. Fountainell also told deputies he didn't see Janet Myers lying on the living room floor. And this fight continues into the den area. Fontenelle notices his baseball bat and sees it as an opportunity to defend himself from the Penny Knight assault. So he takes a blow and he comes hard into Terry Myers' arm. After this point, the statements from the two men were almost identical, with Bill Fontenelle also describing wrestling, pausing in front of the TV, and fighting again. When you read the statement and they're watching TV, it's almost comical. You, you think about it. One kid's in the bedroom, a baby in another bedroom, wife lying in the living room. Two-year-old Ryan was in a bedroom unconscious. He would recover completely. And deputies found infant Sarah on the floor of her room, unharmed. Once again, Carrie grabs a knife. Bill realizes he has got to get out of here, so he's going to run from the door. He receives a few more stab wounds in the back, but is able to make it through the foyer and out the door. The more investigators studied the two statements, the more they wondered about the nature of the relationship between husband and wife and husband's best friend. Janet was pretty fiery. She and Carrie had a, had a relatively uh, excitable relationship. And if something happened, I would think she probably, she probably fought back. And the fighting started from, from the very beginning when they were dating. Monique Price went to college with Janet and Carrie and later lived next door to them. And uh, one particularly bad fight, uh, Carrie put her out of the trailer and locked the door. And they had a glass uh, storm door. So Car uh, Janet began picking up shells and gravel out of the driveway and throwing it at the door. It shattered. And at the point that it did, Carrie came flying out of the door, grabbed her around the neck, and banged her head on the car, slung her through the gravel. I mean, every fight that I personally saw, that's the way it was. And then within a few minutes, uh, Carrie would usually walk off, drive off, go somewhere else, and Janet would just beat a path back to him. Couldn't get back to him fast enough. And in a situation like that, at least that I've seen, when, when one hits his wife the first time, it's a shock to everybody. Not only the person getting hit, but the person hitting. Then the second hit comes a little bit easier. The third hit is more easy. And the fifth hit is routine. It can get out of hand, especially when you have a baseball bat. Back at Henry Lee's lab in Connecticut, there was a dramatic turning point in the case. When Dr. Lee examined the clothes Myers and Fontenelle had been wearing, he saw something no one else had noticed. So why don't you start writing? Okay. There were some obvious blood smears on Carrie's gray slacks and Bill's blue jeans, which could have happened during the fight. But under microscopic examination, Dr. Lee also discovered blood spatters on both pair of pants, a finding that would change the course of the investigation. We found medium velocity type of blood spatter. The pants of Meyer and the blue jeans of Fontanelle's. And we grouped those blood stamps, we found Janet's type on both Meyer and Fontanelle's clothing. Both men claimed they hadn't seen Janet alive that night, but that's not what the evidence showed. If Jenna already passed away. In fact, we shouldn't see medium velocity blood spatter. Medium velocity blood spatter have to have force impact a liquid blood and project on a surface. That alone tells me two of them was close or next to a blood source, liquid blood source, and Jenna's type. As Dr. Lee educated me, at the time that Janet Myers was being bludgeoned to death, both of the uh, both of the men had to be had to be there either as participants or as spectators. And either way, it's a gruesome image. Once they got Henry Lee involved, and Henry Lee says, "Let me tell you something. Carrie Myers is not your store witness." I mean, he has got a lot of culpability with this. 
Dr. Lee had found blood traces that looked bad for both men. But should the state go ahead with a second murder trial? And who would they charge with Janet Meyer's death? Investigators trying to sort out what happened the night Janet Myers was murdered she now had help from Henry Lee. Towards the living room and uh, chasing her. And she was hit while she was standing? Yeah, first. Yeah. First. Then knocked down on the ground, hit more times. Uh, yeah, here shows, you know, what's the original condition. Dr. Lee determined that Janet Myers died in her living room, but elsewhere he discovered signs that the murder did not begin there. Blood spatter. Yeah, that's a lot of blood spatter. The trail of blood allowed Dr. Lee to reconstruct the scene that night, not as described by Carrie Myers or Bill Fontanelle, but by letting the trace evidence itself tell the story. The afternoon, when Meyer walked into the house, saw Jenna, we say, laundry basket. They start verbally arguing. That argument become physical. He probably hit Janet, and Janet ran into the bedroom, dropped the gas basket, and during that time, the boy was trying to hold in the mother, and Meyer accidentally hit the son. Uh, meanwhile, Janet started running towards the family room. At this point, more likely Jenna pick up an ashtray, tried to defend herself and hit uh, Meyer on the head. And Meyer started fighting with her, and at this point took up the bat, started beating her up, and Jenna started running through the hallway. At this point, um, Fontenelle more likely walk in. Uh, Meyer hit Janet, caused all those blood spatter, medium velocity impact spatter on the wall. She more likely this position and coming down, Fontenelle meanwhile walk next to her and that's why it caused a lot of blood spatter on Fontenelle's clothing and more hitting caused a lot of splash and blow project onto the wall because this liquid uh, accumulation of liquid blood start running down. We see a bloody handprint, a left hand. Also have some finger mark, looks like a right hand. Like she tried to holding herself against the wall. So two of them walk into the family room and start talking about what they're going to do. They place the baseball bag next to the sofa. They have to do something. They have to stage in something. So they come up with the plan. Fontenelle will use the bat, hit the Meyer. Meyer will get the knife and stab him. Because the stabbing is pretty shallow. If, in fact, two of them struggle really stabbing, we should have a deeper stab. In addition, the story they tell, uh, when he walk in, the first shot break the, his arm. He, it's almost impossible to pick up the knife. After he stab Fontenelle, Fontenelle walk out of the, that's why we see this blood trail and get out of the door. In their statements to deputies, neither man mentioned seeing or checking on Janet and the kids. Carey told his family it was because of his injuries. But the blood evidence said otherwise. It indicated that Janet Myers wasn't assaulted once, but twice and that the second attack happened sometime after the first. On the wall, there are approximately 2,500 to 3,000 individual spatters. Then we see blood spatter on top of blood spatter. That shows the first drop has to be almost dry. 
then the second drop deposit. If the first drop still wet, two drops will form, become unified with one drop start running downwards. That's a indication shows their time segment between the first impact and the next impact. This blood evidence was conclusive that there was a bit of time when Janet was first assaulted against that living room wall, dropped down, bled out for a long period of time, and then a subsequent event came in. And that subsequent event was just yet another series of strikes. We later found out from the autopsy that Janet Myers actually dies of an air embolism uh, where, the, where air travels to her heart and kills her. So we have her on that living room floor for a very long period of time. That's how you could spend 10 hours in a house and not call the police and not call for an ambulance. It's not because you're fighting for 10 hours. Everybody knows that's physically impossible. It's because you're trying to figure out a way to talk yourselves out of this incredible nightmare that they've gotten themselves involved in without being able to have somebody take the rap for it. Sheriff's investigators never examined the murder weapon for fingerprints. By the time Dr. Lee received the bat in his lab, many people had handled it. But there were other clues to show who might have wielded it the night of the murder. The location of the cast-off bloodstains on the wall indicated where Janet's killer must have stood and which hand he used to swing the bat. You see the pattern. That's a forward spatter pattern. In order to get that alignment, to see the spatter and that forward projection of that cast off, that was a left-handed person who swung. As Dr. Lee did the analysis of the blood stain evidence, there was a very clear left-handed cast off pattern on the back of Kerry Myers' shirt. And Kerry Myers, unlike Bill Fontenelle, was left-handed. A lot of the, the police that we had involved, detectives involved in the case, all said the same thing. They looked at the photos. Uh, only a husband could do that. You know, only a husband could hate a woman that much. And two young children would be victims as well for the rest of their lives. This is the true tragedy. Song Ryan only three years old. Their daughter, Sarah, only a few weeks old. Two kids. This is a true tragedy. Dr. Lee thought he knew what had happened during the long hours on the night Janet Myers was murdered. But would the prosecution be able to lead a jury through the tangled web of evidence to allow it to reach a verdict? When the state of Louisiana originally charged Bill Fontenelle with killing Janet Myers, the trial ended in a hung jury. But when Dr. Henry Lee reconstructed the crime scene years later, the evidence pointed to Janet's husband, Carrie, as the man who wielded the baseball bat that killed her with his friend Bill Fontenelle in the house when she died. In a television news interview before he was indicted, sitting with his children, Sarah and Ryan, Myers did not appear to be worried. It's limbo. It's like living in limbo. I mean, this is something we've waited for for a long time, just to see this, see justice. And then one day you leave your house, and six hours later you walk back in, and your whole life changes. Before the trial, Kerry made a critical decision. He declined his right to a trial by jury and chose to have his case heard by a judge alone. He did not think he would be convicted. We even tried to tell Kerry, you know, go with a jury, don't go with a judge. It'll turn out okay, you know, was his comment. It'll, it'll be all right. And that, that is the approach he took. It, it'll work out fine. Bill Fontenelle chose a jury trial, so both he and Myers were tried together in the same courtroom. The judge heard the case against Myers, and the same judge and a jury heard the case against Fontenelle. 
including the forensic evidence that implicated both men. The important thing to me was the fact that uh, they had her blood on their clothes, their clothing, and it was the impact spatter from something being hit, the spatters. As he has so many times over the years, Dr. Lee presented the jury with the basics of blood spatter analysis. Someone asked about some word that he had said, and he, and he pronounced it again very distinctly and very clearly, and he says, oh, when I leave here, I'll be speaking Cajun. <laughs> the trial went on for 11 days. For many jurors, the turning point came when the judge allowed the prosecution to take the jury to the crime scene. That was a very small house. The entrance foyer is just a few feet inside. There's a small um, partition. And off to your left is the, um, the living room. Walking around in that place, there's no way that they could not have seen that body. And they both said they didn't see the body. They didn't know, you know, each one of them said, well, I didn't know she was in there. And uh, so you know that that wasn't true because there was no way they could not see her where she was. Anybody that was in that house had to know not only where Janet was, but it was just yet another few strides away and you're in the bedrooms with an infant and Ryan. And so way too small, way too confined um, to even begin to give either Bill or Carrie uh, any credibility in this feeling that we didn't know where Janet was. And I think the general consensus of, of most of us was, how could you not know? And at any given point, you'd say, let me go see my family, you know? Whether he holds a knife to your back or whatever, let me go see if my family's okay. At the trial, neither Carrie nor Bill testified, but the jury did hear their original statements to the police. I do believe from the evidence at the trial that Billy was attacked when he first got there and that um, Carrie had attacked him. Janet's blood, according to Dr. Lee, was only on Billy in the minute spatters around the hem of his pants. And when questioned, Dr. Lee said uh, about how he could have gotten those stains, Dr. Lee said this man was jumping and running and spinning and trying to get out of the way. So there was an arch pattern of blood on Carrie's shirt. Carrie had to be swinging the bat. The prosecution didn't emphasize Carrie's motive for killing his wife, but at least one juror wondered if he'd been reacting to the alleged affair Bill said he had begun with Carrie's wife, Janet. He said that they had made love the day before when he was there, a very quick. But then there's doubts about that, you know, people, uh, but that's what he said. And I guess maybe Carrie could have believed that. You know, maybe that's what, uh, what caused his rage. He must have believed it. Then they get into this discussion about, Carrie, what are you doing? So if you would have been having an affair with my wife, I wouldn't have killed her. Now you see what you made me do? Man, why'd you do something like that? What can we do to try to get you out of this? And then, then that played on Bill's personality, that they had the guilt conscience. I was having an affair, you know, I feel I contributed to her death, but that what really happened was that Carrie took me back in there and said, look at her, look at her body, look at what you made me do, and then he picked up the bat and he whacked her a couple of more times, and I was trying to stop him, and I was trying to get out of the way. So if you believe that part of Billy's story, why didn't he tell that initially? And if that happened, why didn't he stop Carrie, overpower him, and call the ambulance right then? Whatever happened in the house that night, it was now up to the judge and jury to decide the role each man played in the murder of Janet Myers. But would they be able to reach a verdict? Media accounts of the trial called it the baseball bat murder and it was big news. But the day finally came when it was up to the judge and jury to dispense justice. I couldn't sleep because I kept going over and over and over the case. 
I didn't know if I was right or not, but it just seemed to me the logical thing with the carry had actually done the, that swung the bat. Of course, I knew Fontenot was there, and therefore he was guilty. The jury was first to announce its verdict. They found Bill Fontenelle guilty of manslaughter, which carried an automatic 21-year sentence. The judge then rendered his decision on Kerry Myers, guilty of murder in the second degree. Myers was sentenced to life without parole. And I was so relieved when the judge found Kerry Myers guilty. Then I thought even more that I had made the right decision. After listening to, to all the testimony, particularly Henry Lee's testimony, that the jury was convinced that Kerry had done it. But it became obvious that the reason why Bill got convicted of manslaughter, in my opinion, is because he had, he had not told the truth about knowing Janet was dead or even Janet was in the house. That's why the physical evidence was so crucial in solving the case. It's because physical evidence doesn't lie. Physical evidence doesn't have a bias. Uh, physical evidence doesn't exaggerate. Fortunately, Dr. Lee was able to come in and unravel a lot of things that uh, it actually do six or seven years later what we should have done initially. A group of friends who had been so close was separated forever, and it was never, never the same after that. You would always wonder, could someone have done something about it? Could things have been different? And you'll always wish that they had been. When I look at the Janet's picture, I can't stop thinking. A beautiful family, destroyed just by the temper by some confrontation, some maybe minor differences. Why we don't learn from the history? Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that an antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time.